If you frequently eat at fancy French restaurants, chances are that you've been to one with a Michelin star. Michelin stars are like a symbol of outstanding cooking awarded to restaurants that have distinguished themselves in their art. For restaurants, getting a Michelin star is by far a very painstaking process. Just imagine, as of November 2019, there were only about 2,651 Michelin star restaurants in the whole world. When you compare this with the total number of restaurants across the globe, this shows how much of a rarity these stars are. In fact, do you know that even though restaurants can be awarded multiple Michelin stars depending on the quality of food served and service rendered in that restaurant, just getting a single Michelin star puts the awarded restaurant above 99.9998% of restaurants worldwide. However, though it's actually great that great work and effort put into providing quality service and serving good food is rewarded, what is actually the real truth behind the Michelin star? Do the stars really serve their purpose of rewarding good quality work, or is there a different motive behind what is displayed to the public? Stick with us as we unravel these and many more questions in this video. So, let's begin. You see, the star system was first introduced in 1926 as a way of awarding restaurants that have stood out in the food-making business. During that time, however, a restaurant could only be awarded one star. In 1931, however, Michelin decided to up their game by awarding multiple stars to restaurants that have distinguished themselves even among distinguished restaurants. Talk about the 1% of the 1%. According to Michelin, these stars are not awarded based on customer reviews, but on undercover inspections by anonymous food experts known as Michelin inspectors. These inspectors, however, have to remain anonymous to avoid being given preferential treatment at the inspected restaurant. Aside from this, however, the inspectors must also undergo official Michelin guide training in France before they're certified as inspectors. Inspectors are not allowed to speak to the press, nor are they even encouraged to tell their friends and family about what they do. That's how secretive the process is meant to be. To become a Michelin inspector, one must be passionate and knowledgeable about food, with good attention to detail and the ability to blend in with ordinary customers. Most Michelin inspectors are veterans of the hospitality industry and are required to fill in a comprehensive report following their visit. According to Michelin, the judging criteria are usually the same for each restaurant, focusing on the quality of the ingredients cooking techniques, and most importantly, taste. Now to ensure that the inspectors do not misplace their priorities, Michelin stars are awarded solely on the standard of cuisine. This means that inspectors won't consider things like restaurant decor or ambience when awarding stars, although the comfort and quality are rated from one to five using a crossed fork and spoon symbol. Restaurant owners are not told when the inspection will take place and an inspector may return around three to six times before reporting back to their fellow inspectors, who then come to a joint decision about whether or not to award stars. A restaurant can be rated from zero to three stars, and there's also a Bib Gourmand Award for restaurants offering quality food at a reasonable price. This is for quality food at a value price. For example, you might find a restaurant in New York City offering this award for a meal that costs $40 or less and includes two courses plus wine and dessert. The Rising Star is also another category, originally created to denote one or two star restaurants being considered for two and three stars in the next year. Recently, the Rising Star has been extended to apply to new restaurants likely to be starred in the next evaluation. The purpose is to let that restaurant know they have a chance so you put in some extra effort. But don't be deceived into thinking that restaurants only rise. The truth is that they also fall. What does this mean? Well, due to the fact that inspections are carried out periodically even for restaurants already with a Michelin star or two, some restaurants have been known to lose their stars if considered by the inspectors as unworthy of those stars. In 2013, Gordon Ramsay's eatery in London lost its star after it was discovered unworthy of the Michelin star previously awarded. Just imagine an eatery like that of Gordon Ramsay's losing a star. That's how difficult it is to maintain a star. Getting a star is an even more difficult process as most restaurants end up receiving no Michelin stars at all. This is what makes restaurants covet the rating. Who wouldn't? In fact, 
based on the Michelin Guide for Chicago in 2014. Out of 500 restaurants that were inspected, only one received three stars, four received two stars, and 20 received one star. And guess what? Everyone else got a zero. Also, Michelin stars are awarded to restaurants rather than individual chefs, so chefs who run more than one establishment can hold more than three stars. The record for most Michelin stars ever belonged to the late Joël Robuchon, who once held an impressive 32 Michelin stars in total. But enough about getting and losing stars. What does each star actually represent? Well, one star shows high quality cooking worth a stop. According to the current Michelin Guide, being awarded one Michelin star may be the lowest award, but it's still a high accolade and denotes a new cooking talent with so much potential yet untapped. Notable establishments with one Michelin star include Hawker Chan, a Singaporean hawker stall that was recognized in 2016 for its delicious street food. Currently, the city with the most restaurants with one star is Tokyo. Two stars mean excellent cooking worth a detour. Surprisingly, restaurants with two Michelin stars are even rarer, with only 414 worldwide at the beginning of 2020. Two-star restaurants offer consistently high-quality food and are owned by some of the best chefs in the business. They're likely to be well-known establishments in the world of fine dining, and many will have long waiting lists for reservations. A notable restaurant with two Michelin stars is London's Le Gavroche, which specializes in classical French cuisine and is run by chef patron Michel Roux Jr. Another two-star restaurant is the hugely popular Copenhagen eatery Noma, which is frequently ranked among the best restaurants in the world, despite its lack of a third star. Three stars depict an exceptional cuisine worth a special journey. Three stars are awarded only to the very best restaurants, with only 137 restaurants worldwide currently attaining this highest of all badges of achievement. Three star restaurants offer the ultimate in fine dining and are run by chefs globally recognized for their contribution to the culinary arts. These restaurants are as good as it gets, offering a once-in-a-lifetime dining experience and are always in high demand. All three-star restaurants are notable in their own way, but the restaurant that has held on to the accolade for the longest is Le Pré de Eugenie, which is first awarded three stars in 1977 and has been creating world-leading food ever since. But wait, there seems to be something fishy about the restaurants being awarded Michelin stars. Do you realize that most of these restaurants are either situated in France or serve French cuisine? This has started a conspiracy theory about how these stars are actually awarded. Worldwide, the country with the most Michelin stars is France, with a whopping number of 632 Michelin stars. Compare this with the United States, which only has 193 stars. Shocking, right? Well, what's even more shocking is the fact that the U.S. isn't even among the top five countries with Michelin stars. This award goes to France, which as we've mentioned has the highest, and then in decreasing order to Japan with 413 stars, Italy with 363 stars, Germany with 305 stars, and finally Spain with 212 stars. Well, while there may be a wholly different motive for this, to understand the obvious bias, one has to understand Michelin itself as a company. You see, Michelin Tires, the company which awards the stars, is in fact French, and it's a conspiracy theory that borders on the fact that France has the highest number of Michelin stars based on the fact that the Michelin Guide, which contains the rules used to award these restaurants, is actually French. The organization has been accused, in particular, of upholding French restaurants as the benchmark for hot cuisine. What's even surprising is that French foods don't even rank as some of the most preferred foods in the world. Chinese foods top this list. When you even compare foods in Europe, French doesn't even come close to Spanish or Italian foods. This bias springs from the fact that Michelin inspectors are French, and as such, it's unrealistic to imagine them not ranking based on what they consider to be excellent cuisine. Just imagine getting inspectors whose taste buds have already become used to French foods to rate food worldwide. Doesn't that sound funny? It can be said that the Michelin star system is the best pick if you want to travel to a country like France and you want to get the best out of French foods, but a scam if you want to visit a country like Japan. 